Welcome, Welcome to, to the, the running, running journey. journey. Welcome to the running journey. Welcome to the running journey. Welcome to the running journey. Running journey, yeah. Welcome to The Running Journey, a transformative podcast telling the story of two brothers faced with a very tough time in their lives that decided to do something about it, get healthy, get fit, and start jogging. The Running Journey will take you through half marathons, marathons, Ironmans, ultra marathons, and their attempt at qualifying for the Boston Marathon. Don't forget 5Ks. So, Sorry. We're certainly not <laughs> going to forget 5Ks, Charlie. This is The Running Journey. Listen to us while you run. That's a great okay. idea. Okay, I think we have our intro. Hey, Pat. Sorry. Hey, Charlie, how um, today? What's that? How are you doing today? Good. Uh, yourself? I'm all right. I'm going to be uh, trying to be a little more a- animated for the uh, podcast, podcast crowd, or you want to keep it chill? No, no. Let's just be natural. <laughs> you can if you want. It's fine. Um, <laughs> Turn the front open background and yeah. Um, how was? I uh, saw you were swimming the other day. How's how's it? How's the shoulder coming? Uh, shoulder is good. Like the bone is healed. Swim speed is coming back. But I found out. Well, this morning I had a meeting with. A plastic surgeon and a another orthopedic surgeon because the muscles on the scapula aren't firing so there's a nerve block or a nerve cut somewhere okay so i will have surgery in the next i'm guessing probably two weeks to pull a piece of nerve from the lower traps in the middle of the back and replace it in the rotator cuff so i can actually like Rotate my arm out. And, that, and that's supposed to fix it? Uh, they hope. Yeah. They said the best you can hope for is 85%, but at oh, this wow. point, 85% is better than uh, 0%. So, yeah. Because right now I've got lots of neck and trap doing lots of compensation for this shoulder. So I can, with no resistance, I can externally rotate. But with any resistance there, like it just, my, my arm does nothing. So oh, I've got no. no strength when I'm when we specifically try and target those muscles. So yeah, it means that I you know all the fitness I gained in the last two months we start back at zero again and we try and build again. And yeah, yeah. Oh but, god. So it's, uh, how um, do you want to? Sorry, go ahead. Wanna, I was just gonna say um, I had uh, a bunch of things, a bunch of questions for you, and then. Um, some for Frozen Falcon, some for Iron Man Texas. Um, was there a specific order? I was thinking, let's talk about Iron Man first, and then leave Frozen Falcon for the last for the end. Uh, I have your email open here of the things that were yeah. kind of on your radar, and I was just going to go yeah. through it kind of top to bottom. Um, yeah, that's oh, perfect. Yeah, that sounds good. It's really, I mean, if we can cover off Frozen Falcon as kind of the main focus here i think that's most important yeah and then okay uh iron man texas you know we can talk about the, a lot of this anytime over the next little while because we've got a good okay. 10 weeks now. uh but yes i mean if we have time to sort of touch on it and then start to sort of okay check off the boxes there yeah so like uh, and then m- maybe one more thing on the agenda just talk about like general frozen falcon strategy if, if you if if you if you think that's what we're talking about uh yeah i think. didn't put it on the email but uh so as far as frozen falcon like really i'm not too too worried about it i'm pretty low-key stress not stressed about it but because i'm not really i don't i don't have big expectations for it but um in terms of uh recommendations for nutrition i know you had you said you might have some specific things yeah um just to kind of go back to what you started with there i've talked to a few people this week that are also doing it and it sounds yeah. like everybody's just kind of going like nobody yeah. has any goals they're just like 
One guy is probably one of the best ultra marathoners in the province. Um, yeah. Well, country for that matter. Uh, a guy named Mick Girillo. And he just sort of said, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Mick just said, I want to get 50K on my feet in. And that's it. Like, I don't care what oh, happens, wow. how fast, how slow. He's also racing the day before and beat the cold. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Isn't he? So I read that he's like top 10 OCR racers yeah. in the world at some point or something. I'm not sure if he still is, but. Uh, yeah, tough to know. Um, but it sounds like so much of the obstacle course racing has changed the last couple of years. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, that's why he's looking more ultra this year. So his big oh, I see. is Squamish 50 in the summer. Okay. Wow. Uh, he's building yeah. up that. So he's on the track with me on Tuesdays. So I get to see him on a regular basis. Um, oh, that's cool. Okay. And then, uh, actually, I was supposed to do it. Oh. I've got all kinds of connections to Mick. We'll just leave that alone. <laughs> um, <laughs> we're getting off track totally. Uh, yeah, no, that's okay. A couple of ladies that are going out to do it, and they were kind of like, "Yeah, we're going to run the first couple of hours and put on our snowshoes and just walk." So, oh, okay. like, really wide range of what people are looking for. Okay. But it does look like you're going to have some decent weather. Like it looks like. Yeah, yeah. It really it looks like we'll be really lucky there, actually, because it's. It's going to be like not crazy cold, but cold enough that uh, the surface is going to be decent. Sounds like so. Yeah, nothing's going to get soft. It should be well packed for you. It's not going to be melty, so you're not going to have to worry about wet feet. Yeah, so you probably won't need gaiters. You're going to be sheltered from the wind unless you get a bit of. Well, you're going to have some elevation. Yeah. Uh, could get a little slippery, but it's tough to know at this point exactly what will happen there. Um, yeah. But nutrition wise and, and electrolyte wise, I mean, you're going to sweat. Yeah, uh, okay. You're probably not going to notice it very much because the ideal is that you hit those layers about right so that you're managing the moisture and not really accumulating too much. So okay. that probably means going out feeling just a little bit chilly and then maybe having an extra layer in the pack so that if things okay. do get a little cooler, you can throw something yeah. light on quick, like just a shell, like a super light shell or something, because you will be able to come back every four miles and grab something more. So you don't Yeah, that, that's the thing. Yeah. Yeah, which is nice. Um, but water consumption wise, uh, you know, we're looking for you, you because you will be sweating. We're looking for sort of that uh, probably two to three cups per hour. So 500 milliliters to like 750 milliliters. And, you know, that's kind of the, the base recommendation that I would give you. Okay. Okay. Um, and that can be spread out as in, you know, you have your small bottle in your pack, you know, having a couple of sips just while you're out there, or you're going to be coming through that aid station every four miles. You could just, you know, throw a couple of big gulps down in that time and then get a fair amount. Um, with regards to electrolytes, uh, again, you're going to sweat, but sweat rate's not going to be that high, uh, just from the standpoint that it is cooler. So as long as you're managing your layers fairly well, uh, it shouldn't be terrible. But probably looking at about 500 milligrams per hour, which is pretty much your regular sport drink type thing. So what I would do is uh, if you're carrying uh, water with you on course, if you're fine with that, I would say go with it. If you'd prefer to have like a sport drink of some type on the course in your bottle, you could do that. Or I would just leave a sport drink with your gear at the transition zone and then just have the water on course. But it kind of comes down to what is most uh, palpable for you during the during the run. Okay. So sorry. So 500 milligrams per hour. And how much is in like one bottle of Gatorade? Gatorade? Uh, I would have to Google it exactly, but it's going to be pretty darn close to that. Okay, so close. So, so that much. Uh, wow, that's a lot. I mean, uh, or do you get do you get electrolytes other ways too? You like well, with, with your gonna, food. Yeah, sodium is going to be in anything, uh, yeah. especially any specifically engineered sport nutrition. If you're popping gels or bars, they're all going to have sodium in them. Yeah. So, 500 is a pretty low end number. Like I've had some athletes where we go as high as like 12 to 1500 milligrams per hour. Um, okay. That's usually for hotter conditions on like Ironman. Yeah, it's like going to be not not so hot, but so yeah. As long as we're sure that there's kind of a base number going in, because um, you're not going to overheat that much and have that really high concentrated sweat rate. So, um, yeah, and water, you know, 
couple of cups and you might find on some laps you want to drink a little more some laps a little less but yeah. drinking consistently is going to be important throughout the day okay yeah but so i'll tell you a little bit my plan what i was thinking and then and then maybe i can make slight adjustments to it so so i was thinking um because it's like loops i can kind of use that as a just way of being consistent and yeah. i was thinking um and also to try to keep moving most of the time uh so would my plan was kind of that uh, i would do a loop and then at the beginning of each loop so because there's a pretty steep uphill at the beginning yeah. uh of the loop use that as kind of a place to take my time and and eat and drink um and and drink some water um and then just do that at a, like a consistent pace so that like so every that would be maybe every 45 50 minutes depending on how hard it is i don't i'm not sure how hard it's going to be but that would be like probably at least an every hour uh, i would assume yeah um then as long as you uh, keep in be- mind that when you are climbing even if you're going slow you're putting on a lot more effort so you might have to adjust that plan a little bit. So sometimes it's going to be at the top or sometimes at the bottom. Um, just, but even if I'm like walking compared, like if I'm walking and any how steep it is, if you're going up something steep and a little bit of loose snow, you're working hard. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll well, you know. I might adjust then. <laughs> well, what I'll do though is the first lap I'll, I was definitely going to use as like a scouting mission, yeah. uh, find, find some good paths and, and, um, uh, kind of plan it out but yeah. uh so so the one thing that right now is a little bit concerning is, is the for some reason so the water that sounds like no problem um 500 milligrams per hour of electrolytes that sounds like a lot um that's it's tiny yeah. like a bottle of gatorade not, or you know a couple of gels or something like that it's it's going to go down pretty easily okay yeah. So I guess I could store my gels at the at the at the yurt or something. I'm just worried the gels are gonna freeze. That's that's what what the, uh, we had talked about previously. But and if you store them like inside, close to the body, then they yeah. some of the body heat will keep them a little bit warmer, and it makes it easier to pop them out or tuck them in underneath your like your hemline or something like that, or yeah. like inside your tights. Uh, that works. Oh, okay. Oh, inside my tights will work. Yeah. Oh, that I could probably put in like five there. Yeah. Well, you don't want to carry more than you have to, right? But yeah, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is like you've got room. I won't have to like stop, and if I put five, it like weighs nothing, right? And I yeah, that I won't have to. Maybe that's one less stop I have to do. Uh, Okay. Well, that's good. Uh, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna put gels in there. Okay. And then and then that'll help with the electrolytes, and then. Uh, should should I then load up at the beginning with like a Gatorade instead of water to start? Uh, like during the first lap or before the race? Like so, uh, I guess my my bottle, my insulated bottle is uh, it's like a liter. Yep, it's pretty big. So and it's pretty heavy, but I was my I was my plan was that I was going to use it so that I don't have to stop as much. Um, yeah. So like, but. But because I'm going to be kind of slowing down every lap to eat, it would be to drink part of it uh, every lap. So on when I load it up at the beginning, should I have electrolytes in there? Or should I have the, the Gatorade in there instead of water? Or? Uh, I think that's going to depend a little bit on you. Like if you okay. find you have no issues with Gatorade, uh, yeah. I would say push the Gatorade as much as you can, because that'll push a few more calories in your system as well. Some people find just the flavor of Gatorade is really overpowering and they water it down a little bit or they just don't like it. So the yeah, issue is yeah. we haven't had a lot of chance to practice with it. So, so for for me, I mean, uh, in, in races where I'm running a little bit faster, sometimes it does uh, like stimulate stuff, I guess. <laughs> uh, yeah. But I feel like at the slower at the slower rate that I'm going to be going, I don't anticipate. But maybe watering it down half and half might might be an idea. Yeah, uh, I would play with that a little bit at home. Yeah, uh, like next couple of days, fool around with it a bit, okay. see what tastes good. 
And then whatever tastes good, I would water it down probably a little bit more if you're a guy that doesn't like super sweet. Okay, okay. That sounds good. Uh, the other so thing, I think, sorry, is yeah, go ahead. You talked, did you ever buy the hydration pack? Uh, like a hydration actually, pack and a straw. And... Oh, I bought it, but I don't like it. Okay. So I was going to say, because if we get temps that are like minus four, minus five, that might be a strategy to go back to. But if you haven't run it and you're not comfortable with it, then scratch it. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just so scared that it's going to freeze. And, yeah. Uh, and I guess I know that there are ways to prevent it from freezing, but uh, it eat. sounds complicated. Yeah. So. Okay. So if you got the bottle, you're fine. Uh, you've got enough liquid in there and you know you can loop every four miles. So we're not going to be yeah. in trouble. Yeah, like, I mean, it's going to be a bit heavier than what I would like, but uh, it's fine. It's, yeah. A liter is, what, 2.2 pounds more? Yeah. It's fine. Plus the bottle. But you're not going to have to worry about, I mean, we're not setting records. We're not setting FKTs here. It's not, yeah. you know, yeah. super ultralight. So, yeah. Um, cool. So I'm, 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 I'm. Excited to try something new, but I'm not super uh -huh. optimistic on how well it's going to go. But uh, at the same time, I, uh, nothing's really worrying. Like I'm not really worried about anything for it. Like so, yeah. I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. Just remember, if you go out feeling good in the first hour, what is good in the first hour is going to feel really freaking hard by the eighth hour. So you got to go out in that first hour with it feeling pretty darn easy if you want to feel anywhere well, here okay by the eighth. Yeah, yeah, I, I get that. So my dad always tells me this story about when he was a kid and he ran the 50 miler. Anyways, my brother probably told you this story. I have uh, So my, my, my dad, Manitoba used to have a 50 mile race. Okay. And my dad, um, my dad was the youngest one to complete it when he was like, uh, in those days, I guess they didn't have parents or, or I don't know. He, he completed it when he was 12, I think, or something. What? <laughs> yeah. So um, he told me his dad trained him. My dad didn't know any, his, my grandfather didn't know anything about training or anything, but he told me that uh, his strategy was like, basically he was almost like walking the whole thing at the beginning. And then at the end, more and more running and then more and more running. And then he basically ran the last 10 miles. So, um, I kind of, that strategy kind of makes sense to me in terms of, like, I feel like I know it's super hard to do a negative, but I feel like from what I've been reading that that's probably the better way to go. So I kind of want to try to do that a little bit, even though I know it's going to be a lot harder to pull off than, uh, to actually do. So what I was thinking was like to do like effort level of like one or two or like two to start type of thing and then, and then slowly increase it. And, and, and then once I get to a point where it's like, uh, maybe there's like two hours left, then, then I'll just do it by feel. I'll know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah or something like that. But that was, and I know and nothing ever happens how you plan, but that was kind of my, uh, my idea on, on how to, how to pace it. Yeah. Like in talking with Rob on Monday, we talked a lot about how just pace is out the window, right? Because there's so many yeah. things that you can't predict with regards to pace. Yeah. Your elevation, your snow surfaces, you know, yeah. what oh, yeah. the yeah, yeah. there is. And so we're really looking at rate of perceived exertion, which is your, you know, your two out of 10 and your heart rate. So knowing that, you know, you want to start with that heart rate fairly low, uh, fairly yeah. low. Yeah. And even at what starts as a two out of 10, you don't need to change your pacing because after no no hours, no yeah it's yeah. gonna feel like a four and after yeah. you know six hours that four is gonna feel like a six yeah so exactly you yeah. just want to get you through so that you know even if that last lap is you know an eight or a nine you're still finishing right yeah 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 and, and having the like like what i feel like when you're learning new new uh new kind of uh distances for me like when I, when you're learning a how to pace a new distance it's like um you don't really understand how, how what what the the pacing is so you're always i feel like you're better off holding back more than what you ever think and I'll, that's that's what i'll consciously try to do although i know i might not i might not achieve it but that's kind of would be my, my thought yeah um, yeah so starting out conservative leaving lots in the tank and going along with that 
if you're missing some of the nutrition early in the day, it'll come back and slap oh. you late in the race. That, too. Yeah, that that Maybe. was another that was another specific question I had for you uh, about like I have, don't have much experience with nutrition, and I really don't know even in the past if if I've ever gotten enough or if like because okay, so I ran I've run six marathons and. Yeah. The first five, I took no nutrition. And then the last one, I actually did take nutrition and I did really well on it. But I don't know if actually I did well, if it was, if how much of that was because of nutrition or like, I don't even know. How can you tell you're getting enough? Or is there any, is there any way to tell? It's hard to tell if you're getting enough. Well, I mean, there's telltale signs, right? If you bonk or something like that on a course. Yeah. I yeah, then I'm not getting don't know for sure. Yeah. Um, but basically... I mean, the strategy we're going to go with moving towards an Ironman is getting as much in as we can and figuring out, okay, you know, if you can tolerate 100 grams of carbs per hour yeah. and your stomach's comfortable with that, great, we're going to sit there. But if you get a little queasy, then we start backing it off a little bit and find that sweet spot because it's yeah. such a long time that it really doesn't matter almost how much you put in, you're going to end up at the end of the race with a deficit. Yeah, so our yeah. goal here is to minimize that. And because your main fuel is going to be carbs here and your body needs those carbs, we got to keep going in. Okay. So my recommendation for you for this race would be conservative because you haven't done a lot with gels, but it'd yeah. be basically every half hour having a gel. So okay. to an hour, which is going to give you between about 50 and 60 grams of carbs, which is really on the low end. Yeah. Uh, but it'll also tell us, you know, how you're feeling. And then based off of that, if you do have a low point, you can take another one. Or if you feel yeah. a little queasy, you wait an extra 15 minutes and take one 15 minutes late and just offset your schedule a little bit. So we do okay. have- Yeah, so it, it'll be it'll be good. It'll be a learning learning experience for me. So yeah. that's good. Like the eight hours long, like I feel like just because it's that long, yeah. I'll be able to experience that. So that's good. And really, as we go and think of Ironman next, that's what this next 10 weeks of Ironman training is going to be is dialing in that nutrition and coming up with a strategy that's going to work for you. Cause we know we're going to have six hours on the bike and a marathon and you can't yeah. start that marathon unless you're well fueled. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So with just a run, we can under fuel a little bit, but coming to Ironman we need to be like seriously on top of it. So, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Scary. Scary <laughs> stuff. No, it's, no, it's all good. It's a different game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you want to talk about Ironman now? Are you comfortable with Falcon for the weekend or any other Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm pretty, I, I'm, I'm at peace with what's going to happen. <laughs> I'll just let it happen. Yeah. I think the biggest so, thing is if you've get a, got a, a somewhat reasonable temperature day, then you're going to be awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I like think so. Today, like I ran 25 K today. And I was like the whole time. So, oh yeah, <laughs> I, I would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> Mine is, was, it, it was super cool. I just went and picked up my kids. Uh, I always walk to get them Yeah, and it was freezing. Oh yeah. God. It was, it was so cold. Yeah. It's miserable. Uh, so looking at your Ironman Texas list here, uh, swimming, should I start practicing some sighting? <laughs> You're right. You have no black lines on the course. So sighting is going to come in. Um, I'm, you might have noticed that swim markets are changing or I don't think I changed them for you this week, but I changed them for Travis and I changed them for Dwayne because you're going to finish the frozen Falcon and then I'm going to shift yours over a little bit, but longer, more continuous swims where we're starting to do some more race specific type stuff. Well, so you did. Fun. Yeah, I did one. I did one uh, Tuesday. Okay. It was like, uh, my best uh, swim workout ever. Oh yeah. Uh, it was good. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah. So, yeah. So it's really worrying me about, like, I feel like it's kind of like something I need to practice is like the stroke when you sight, right? Like, because uh, to not like completely lose your momentum. Yeah. So um, the easiest way to do that is if you're swimming on Tuesday next week, let's plan yeah. to spend a few minutes and I'll make sure I'm over at uh, Bonnie Vitale and we go through that a little bit. Okay. Because cool. it's way easier to describe in person than try and show over video. So, okay. Okay, that sounds good. Uh, because swimming wise, like I feel good about everything except like the swimming straight or and also swimming straight like is another thing that is like if I'm swinging crooked, that's a bunch of wasted energy. So is there any drills that help with swimming straighter or no? 
everything we're doing right now and everything we've done previously in the pool has been about swimming straight. So when I'm trying to like adjust your entry and stuff like that and balance yeah. it off, it's all about swimming straight. Okay, um, good. Finding that when we get to open water, you're not swimming straight. It just means sighting more often. Okay. Rather yeah. than sighting, you know, every 10 or 15 strokes, you might be every five or seven strokes. Okay. Yeah, but otherwise swimming, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, um, you're looking good like in water. A, I'm way better shape than I was uh, when I did the, the Riding Mountain one. So yeah. it's good. <laughs> awesome. Um, biking, I feel good about it as well. So what I'm really uh, concerned <laughs> with the biking, though, is two things. Is like the balance and practicing on a real bike, like really outside. And then, uh, and then just the logistics of like drinking water and eating and all that it is a little bit stressing me out we don't have to figure it all out today but uh but those things are are a little bit uh wor worrying me right now but yeah um we are a little bit at mother nature's mercy on that one to a certain extent yeah i mean last year people really weren't able to ride outside till pretty much may like we had just abysmal weather and honestly, yeah. in you know, 25 years of triathlon in Manitoba, last year was by far the worst year. So we're going to cross our fingers that we get a normal year. And that would mean that we are out last week of March, beginning of April. And I mean, you're wearing lots of layers, but you can wear cycling clothing and be on a road bike. And generally, with that said, Birdsell Park is the best place for that because they tend to get an open loop. It's clear sooner yeah. than anything in the city, uh, just because city roads... You tend to have tons of potholes, tons of gravel and salt, and it's just not worth it. You want to wait till that stuff's cleaned up in the city. So driving yeah, yeah. So, is the option. So what's the um, what's the like? I guess what's the criteria to know if you you can go like? Let, let's say I'd be able to get dressed like at Birds Hill. Clear roads and tolerance to cold. Okay. Once that loop around Birds Hill is clear of ice and snow, you can ride. Yeah. Uh, okay. And cold tolerance from the standpoint that you need to put on almost twice the number of layers that you would for the same temperature running. So if you're going out at zero degrees, I mean, on a run, you can practically go out in shorts at zero degrees. But on a bike, yeah, yeah, yeah. two pairs of tights, just because the speed and the wind you generate, it's way Yeah, yeah. No, I, I've noticed that. Uh, so that's that's also like i get so hot down here when i do my training like uh so is it slightly is that part of it like the fact when you're outside like you, you're cool it's not as hot because you're you're cooling yourself so i'm i'm hoping that that's actually a benefit uh when it comes to the iron man that it's not it's, like i'm not going to feel as hot as i am in my basement when i'm doing it but no yeah you're you're developing so much wind like just moving through either the wind that's out there, but the, the wind that's generated by your movement. Yeah. It's, you've got a huge cooling effect and very, very rarely. I mean, sometimes in midsummer you can, you know, it's hot enough that you're sweating actually in New Jersey, but more often than not, you're going to find that the wind just whips it away and you won't even yeah. notice that you're sweating. So, yeah. And then you stop and then it pours out of your helmet, <laughs> but as long as you're moving, it'll be good. So, yeah. 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 Okay. But it is um, definitely a challenge to learn to dress on the bike because it's way different than dressing for the run. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, that'll be a challenge. <laughs> yeah. um, yeah. Nutrition wise on the bike, uh, there's lots of options there. Um, you've got a few more options because you're not running and pounding. So your stomach doesn't yeah. have the same upset. So, I mean, your brother loves to eat cliff bars and that worked really well for him. So he just chewed cliff bars the whole thing. Other people love gels. Um, I go with a liquid that I can mix at 100 grams, and I know that I get 100 grams of carbs per bottle, so I just drink a bottle per hour, throw the bottle away, take a new new bottle. So, Sorry, can you repeat that? I kind of lost you for a second. So you take a bottle of what? I use a bottle. It's called Scratch Super Fuel, and it's 100 grams okay. of carbs, and I can mix it into one bottle. So I can drink and get oh. 100 grams, like 400 calories per bottle. So I just have a bottle an hour. And that oh, works should I try that? Way. That sounds like a very simple solution. I should <laughs> try that. Solution. The complication to that one is for the bike, you can basically carry about three bottles, maybe four yeah. on the bike. 
but it means in your special needs bag, you either have to have more bottles or you need to have like the powder with you. And then when you take uh, a bottle from an aid station, you mix more of your own. So you can kind of go. Okay. Either. Well, I mean, I could do it. Uh, I could do it once or twice, maybe if it's not, if it's too complicated right. and then. The biggest thing is else, you but... need to try it and make sure you like it. Yeah. Um, Cause that's one that's way to get scratch. lots of calories in as well as fluids. So. But yeah, there is that that balance of, you know, getting more bottles when you need it, making sure you've stored the bottles adequately on the bike, getting the calories in, being comfortable to let go of the handlebar to get a bottle, and all those things. But oh yeah, oh god, I gotta practice all those things. <laughs> uh, if you're, I remember having a hard time. I having a hard time last time. I didn't drink any water because I just couldn't do it, or I, or I didn't practice it. I wasn't confident enough when I did that Olympic yeah. too. That'll be. Uh, absolutely essential to be able to yeah. handle a bike. Um, <laughs> one other option that, you know, for if it looks like we might have a late spring, uh, if you've ever seen a set of bicycle rollers, uh, they would mimic riding on like open roads a little bit. So basically it's three rollers. There's two rollers at the back of the uh, set of rollers that the rear yeah. wheel sits on. And then it's attached by a cable to the front wheel. Yeah. Basically just balancing on the rollers. So it gives you a very yeah, yeah. feel because you have to steer and balance. And okay. That and getting a water bottle. Yeah. It's... Oh, so we, uh, that'd be good practice if ever. Yeah. Yeah. I do have a set here, actually. I, I'll pull it over and you might be able to see it if I can get it in view. Sure. Uh, yeah. My son rides on them. Actually, let me turn the light on here for you so you can actually see them. All right, get that angle there. Oh, not enough light there. One more light. All right, let's see if we're in view here. All right, so there are the rollers. Okay. Wow. Uh, so there's the front. So my front wheel sits on here and it spins, and then the rear wheel sits on the back here. So you're totally balanced on the whole structure. I see. So if you steer too far one way, you fall off and crash. What is that meant to be used indoors? Yep. Oh, so it's like a trainer that actually trains your balance as well. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So you don't get a lot of resistance out of it. So it's a different kind of workout. It's good for doing like some high fast spinning yeah. uh, and, and obviously the balance. So, well, I mean, it'd be good for just practicing, just practicing, grabbing the bottle and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it used so, to be really, really cool and everybody had them. Um, yeah. but since Zwift and all that stuff came in and people are, people are just buy smart trainers now. So now oh, it's yeah. a dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, as far as gear, so, uh, let's start with the, okay. So wetsuit. Go buy a wetsuit. Um, I know I need the, what's that? <laughs> I said go buy a wetsuit. I got to buy it. Yeah. So I guess I need the five mm on the, on the hips. Yeah, most, how I decide? Most wetsuits will have the five millimeters. Yeah. On the lower body. Oh, okay. So. Yeah. Yeah, some of the really like top end wetsuits will be more three millimeters, but they're built for people that have been swimming all their life and they're gonna be a thousand dollars. So yeah, yeah, okay. you can probably leave that alone. Yeah, okay. Um, as far as other additional bike equipment, so I have one water bottle mount, like do I need more? I guess I'd need more, right? Eh? uh chances are your bike has probably only got one mount on it so there's two other things that we can do well there's a couple of things but the most obvious one is you can get special bottles that will fit in between your arrow bars so while you oh, really it'll just have a little straw that comes up and you can just basically lean over and suck to the straw and oh you... like a bladder is that like a bladder it's similar to a bladder yeah like oh rob has has one okay yeah. 
Uh, There's also some that are like a hard plastic that fit in between your bars. Oh, that's what he has. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So there's, there's you're, you're saying there's okay. So get get that. That well, that's another way to carry a bottle, and those ones are refillable. So usually, what they have is they'll have some sort of gasket on it, and you can just grab a bottle from an aid station and just pour it right in, and then just get rid of the bottle. And then the okay, other so option is having a behind the seat carrier, and you can usually put two bottles in behind the seat. So that gives you three to four bottles. Yeah, now. but that assumes that I can. That's that assumes that I can reach that. I guess is it hard to reach? Uh, it's not too bad. I mean, I can do it with my broken arm, um, but it's just getting used to it. Yeah, back. but yeah, yeah, but you you know how to ride a bike. So. <laughs> I've had a little. More, well, you'd think I know how to ride a bike, but apparently I don't. <laughs> um, but that's okay. one of those ones that if you did that, the, the behind the seat one sooner rather than later, you can practice that on the trainer pretty easily. Just getting used to knowing where it is. So you don't have to look, you can just reach behind you, kind of find your hip and then find the bottle. And like at the stops, like, so at the aid stations in an Ironman, like, do you, do you stop and, and, or can you get, get them while you're still moving? Uh, how does that work? For bottles? Iron Man will yeah. have people out holding bottles. So as long as you yeah. slow down, they will pass you one. So you don't have to get off your bike unless you want to, but they will pass you bottles and then you can pour it in, toss it. You can drink it, toss it, whatever you need. And is it hard to do that? Like, I, I guess slow, you got to slow down a, a little bit. And just, have to, yeah, just slow down enough for, the, for it. And yeah. obviously the yeah. first couple, you might slow down a little bit more, but you know, yeah, yeah. So you're comfortable. And then if you're not comfortable, just, Put a foot down and get a bottle. That's fine. Yeah, I remember uh, when I did the riding mountain. You know, it's an out and back. Yeah. And that the I was really stressed about the turn at the end. Uh, so I took it really, really slow. Yeah. <laughs> and that's okay. Yeah. Yeah, it was fine. Yeah. yeah until you get comfortable on the bike uh, and do all those things in practice. But everyone's actually got to go pretty slow on a 180. So. Yeah. 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 Well, I did get passed, and then I get I got passed by one guy, and then I repassed him right yeah. after. <laughs> get him back on the downhill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so helmet. Do I need? Uh, should I invest in anything there? Or? You could spend a million dollars on a helmet. Basically, if no, 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 the no, helmet like is a, in is in good shape and fits you yeah. well, it should be fine. But if it's got okay. any cracks or is falling apart anywhere, then I would get a new helmet. Because they but will like, often do bike checks at an Iron Man just to make sure that okay. things are in good working order. Yeah, it might be pretty old, so I'll I'll double check. Uh, maybe I'll get a new one, but it, I won't spend a lot of money on it. Yeah, unfortunately, like everything else, I mean, you can go really, really cheap on a helmet, but you want it to go comfortable. Make sure it's something. Has yeah, yeah. Where you're gonna be happy with for six hours. So. Yeah. Okay. So comfortable is the key. Yeah. Okay, so water bottle, we said one behind the seat and likely something in front that you can just kind of drink with. A, you could that probably has go a, a, a double behind the seat. Double behind the seat? Yeah, okay. most of them will come with two bottles. Two that, bottles. that way I can, like, if I can start off with, like, one, two, three, plus the two at the front. Yeah, three plus the, the one integrated in the front, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then you can drink and toss or drink and replace, and you've got some options yeah. that way. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Because you're gonna need more, uh, like that won't cover you off for that ride, so. Okay, uh, and then is any other gear, the bike worth investing in? At this point, we're probably okay. You've got the main basics. I mean, if you've got a good set of sunglasses that you're comfortable with, you're going to want that. Uh, the only thing that I might... I don't have that. I should get that. Sunglasses? Uh, okay. It's a good idea. Texas can be a little sunny. And plus just the yeah. eye side of things. Um, you know, we can get into safety gear and stuff like that, but that stuff's not super essential, depending on how confident you are on your bike. Like a lot of people have full-time blinking lights on the front and back. Maybe not in a race, but for training-wise. Um, oh, okay. And you're just probably going to need a little bit of clothing as you get close to the outside weather. Um, so some of your yeah, 
a swap over, but you might have to start looking at a couple of bits and pieces. Uh, which I did, is always... the, I did buy the bike jacket yeah. that has uh, the windbreak breaker biking jacket. But yeah, clothing, clothing, I'll get it when we need it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you had tri suit down there. Yeah. Yeah. Do uh, I, should I get that? A, you have a few choices for the race. I mean, you can do the swim and then change into bike stuff and then change into run stuff if you want. It just means you're spending more time. At each stage. Yeah, I kind of liked. I kind of liked having the tri suit when I did the uh, the the riding mountain one because it was actually super comfortable to run in. Yeah, and it was comfortable on the bike too. Actually, yeah. I mean, the only thing is potentially uh, should I have uh, some kind of. So we had talked after one of my workouts where I I had a bit of a, an issue there with pain. Um, should I have a, a bit of a, a padding? padded thing or, or no most tri suits will have a thin chamois in it yeah uh, whereas a bike short will have a thicker chamois uh so as long okay. as you test out whatever you buy a few yeah. times to make sure it's going to be comfortable then we go for it and then the other thing that's going to come into play is just because of the length of an iron man day it, and this yeah. actually might come into frozen falcon as well is a uh, lube like uh, a stick of body glide yeah yeah uh, just to make sure that if you get some hot spots you're able to take care of them right away uh, oh okay so here's another question i had for okay. you about frozen falcon but it's probably a very bad idea so when uh one of my foot was worse i had uh i had this gold bond uh cream that kind of numbs it out uh, it does, if my foot gets bad by the end, should I just, should I put that? I should probably just quit the race, right? <laughs> I have no experience with any numbing agents like that. Um, yeah. I think my first option would be to try switching shoes or to try a, yeah. loop a hot spot. Yeah. But if that foot's just getting to the point where it's getting worse and worse and worse and it's unbearable, then yeah, I think it'd be time to call it yeah i think i think i think i'll i'll just instead of putting numbing stuff I'll, if it's bad i'll just i'll just call it because it's not yeah. worth uh like that's the other thing we haven't talked about running for the iron man yet and that's kind of one of my things is right now i feel like i can't handle too much um volume like if it's too concentrated like when i went to uh when i went to the netherlands and it was every day and I guess it wasn't freezing. Um, it was it was fine. Like every day, like that smaller amounts was fine. But yeah. those long runs really kind of kill me a little bit right now. So, so with your long runs, I deliberately packed a couple together, like the Saturday Sunday. So yeah, and Saturday that Saturday makes sense for frozen. But that's going to be gone because you're going to have a bike and then a run or a run and then a bike. So there's going to be a little bit more spread out running through the week. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and, and I mean, I, I'm not saying, I'm not saying I can't it, like, I just need to work up to it. I feel at this point, like, I, like I, I've been through this before and like, it just takes me a bit of time to, to get, uh, accustomed to it. I feel, but, yeah. uh, we push things a little bit more getting a frozen Falcon. Um, yeah, 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 which is fine, uh, which is great. Yeah, we're not as worried. I mean, the biggest thing for you was going to be that bike. So that's going to be the, the big part of the day. Yeah. And the run is going to be not an afterthought, but after the bike thought. So. Well, so, okay, so out of the three events right now, I think, I feel like the run is what I'm least prepared for. Because uh, even though I'm from a running background, like I've done marathons and stuff, I feel like it, that sensation of having done a swim and then a long bike, and now the men, it's a, the men, mental aspect of you know having to run a, a marathon on. Like I know how mar how hard marathons are just by themselves, so like that part is probably like I feel like that's what I'm the least prepared for right now. So, yeah. so but, two uh, thoughts on that. First one is that a marathon at the end of an Ironman is not a marathon. 
it is still no, I, yeah. they're very different with regards to pacing with regards to nutrition with regards to feel yeah totally different yeah you need to take the yeah. whole marathon mentality and kind of throw it away second okay. thing is that how you operate the first two thirds of your day or actually first three quarters of your day meaning the swim and the bike is what's yeah. going to make that run so right now yeah totally, totally. Got a comfortable yeah. swim we're way behind, well, not behind on the bike, but we have lots of catch up to do on the bike, right? Just to get you comfortable on the bike. And we're limited a little yeah. bit. We're still stuck inside and you haven't been outside and all those things. Yeah. But yeah. if we can get you to a point where we know good, comfortable pacing for you on the bike, we can get a certain number of calories in, a certain number of, a certain amount of hydration. And then we can start predicting, okay, he's going to finish his bike at this intensity at this time. And then we know through training that he can run at this pace off of it. So, yeah. So we're looking at, really yeah, that's what, that's what I mean though. That that's exactly what I mean is, is that all those things that we have to figure out and yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's coming. So you're going to start seeing some longer bricks in the weekend where they're like three or four hours on the bike and then yeah. running off the bike and running afterwards. And I'll put yeah. in, you know, let's start at this pace and see how that goes. And you'll tell me pretty quickly, well, that was just not going to happen. Or, hey, we need to eat more calories. Or maybe we need to eat a little and, less. But and just, you're talking about, like, trying to feel out the pace on the bike, especially, so that, that uh, you your legs kind of work when you get to the, to, to the run. Yeah. Okay. So everything will be entered sort of based off a percentage of some of the testing we've done. And yeah. then we'll tweak it a little bit up, a little bit down, kind of finding that sweet spot for you. A okay. sweet spot where you can stay on the bike and not have your heart rate rise, where yeah. you can get your nutrition in and where you can stop and run off the bike afterwards. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Uh, I didn't put my nutrition on my last workout, but I did I did take in like 90 grams of carbs. On the bike? Yeah. For okay. that one, one and a half hour one. Yeah. I'll put that in. So for most of those workouts, like if they're under like 90 to 120 minutes, water's probably just fine but yeah when yeah. you get over that two hour mark then you, we need to start putting the nutrition in and that's where we start practicing it so it's really yeah. about one day a week that we're really practicing nutrition and the rest of the days are just you know have a snack before drink some water and go oh okay i i, I just figured might as well practice because i like i feel like that's going to be one of the things that needs practice as it's much not as a possible. bad thing at all yeah you just like, don't feel does like your that. does your stomach actually sorry i missed what you said oh i was gonna say it's not a bad thing to have to practice other times uh, or to practice other days but you don't need to like you don't need to go yeah. through you know 40 gels a week or something silly like that thinking you have to have one for every workout yeah yeah yeah, yeah. no no um th does your did you actually adapt uh like by doing it like, is there an adaptation there that by like eating while you're doing it, or is it just kind of trying to feel it, feel it out? It's a bit of both, but you yeah. know, it's, your body can be trained to getting used to drinking more water or getting more uh, gels coming in. So the better condition it is at that is what we want, right? Just familiarizing your body with what to expect. I mean, the body's an amazing thing. So. Yeah. 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 Agreed. Cool. I think that's all I had for today. I'm, okay. I'm uh, kind of I'm kind of looking forward to see how this is going to go. But uh, yeah, well, I think the big focus here is Falcon, and then you know we're going to be talking a few more times for Texas anyway. Um, I will make a little note to hustle my butt over to uh, Bonnie Hotel on Tuesday morning so we can play with a bit of sighting. If you're feeling good, like if you're feeling bagged from your weekend then sleep in like don't well worry. yeah well tuesday is gonna be i don't know <laughs> we'll see yeah. but <laughs> yeah yeah okay maybe i'll wait for your call okay. then <laughs> i appreciate it thanks pat all right take care have a good thursday night enjoy your weekend yeah i'll look for some yeah, results or some news okay you bet. okay thanks okay. good night <laughs>